Plus Soup. My name is Mariam. My pronouns are she, her. You may know me as Madrumi Crafts on Instagram or Madrumi Designs on Etsy. I'm a cross stitcher and a designer and this is my channel about cross stitch and also other crafts sometimes but today we're going to talk about cross stitch. Everything from designing and also from stitching, regular stitching. Welcome to all of you who are uh, new to my channel and just subscribe or maybe just checking me out. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe and stick around. I upload video once a month, roughly, sometimes more than once a month if I have a special uh, project that I want to uh, talk about. Um, but other than that, uh, it's usually monthly check-ins. Um, and for those of you who are coming back, welcome back. Thank you for sticking around and checking me out month after month. Um, please like um, and leave a comment. I love to receive comments and I always respond to every single one of them. So let's get it started. Um, so first, before I go into stitching or even talk about designing, let's talk about what is happening in the community. So um, uh, right now, the event that is happening and just started on the 1st of October, which was yesterday, um, uh, is Stitchers Against Cancer. This is a charity uh, collaboration. It's a charity bundle, essentially, of uh, 26 designs by 26 designers. All of these designers are members of the Stitchers Collective. I am part of that group. We are a collection or collective of designers from various of backgrounds and various of experiences and styles of design that we, are get, we have gathered around not only to uplift each other and help each other out, but also to partake in activities that are collective collaborative in nature um, and this is one of the things that we do every now and day we, every now and then we come up with a collection that is designed around a specific um, charity event so for this time around uh, it's about cancer and this cancer is something that has not only touched members of our own community but um, it's part of being human and these days you are hardly coming across anyone who has not been touched by cancer either personally or have been exposed to it in one way or another um, in within the friend group or um, you know even like in workplaces so we have all been exposed to that and it's something that it requires a lot of energy and um, finances not only to battle it but also for the person who is involved and the family of those who are involved they require a lot of support so um, we chosen we have chosen four charity organizations that we all, all of the proceeds of these uh, collaboration will go to so how it works is like this so uh, you donate a ten dollar or more so we set a minimum of ten dollar but if you are feeling more generous you are welcome to donate more if you are working for an organization or a company that has um, a, a charity or donation um, match up uh, you're welcome to to do that we are encouraging you to do that to ask your place of work if they can match up your um, donation you go to one of those four charities you make a donation and you capture a receipt uh, either you copy it or screenshot it or save the email that you've received and shows that you have made the donation and then you forward that to us. So all of the information where to go and how to uh, donate and where to send your receipt is uh, down below. I leave uh, the page for uh, Stitchers Collective. Um, in the description box and it does have all the information for you. You can just follow that and you can follow the steps and after you send us your receipt, we need to verify it. So it takes a little bit of time for us to verify a group of people who will work on this specific project are smaller and only one or two will be responsible for checking the receipts and sending the the, the link to people so they can download um, the, the whole packet. Um, so yeah, so after you send us the uh, receipt and we verify it and then we're gonna you're gonna receive an email from a stitchers collective uh, Which include the link so you can download the whole collection all 26 um, Pattern um, take advantage of that and this event will go on throughout the month of October uh, So this is a great segue so I can actually introduce you to the design that I made for this bundle So it looks like this
and it's called um, a Lotus uh, Protection Charm. It's 81 by 81 stitches, it's charted in DMC, and it has a lot of like lavender hues in it. Lavender is a universal color for a cancer, and you're welcome to actually switch it, switch that color palette into uh, the color palette of choice, uh, and what is more representative of the, maybe the type of cancer that uh, the person you wanna make this for. Um, is bad. So Lotus is an ancient symbol of um, divine power. It also uh, symbolizes a rebirth, health, um, and vitality. And uh, this is a symbol that you can actually see a lot being, uh, and it has a protection property as well. So you can see the symbol of Lotus like repeated a lot in uh, various of ancient architecture, Iranian uh, architecture and also in um, in paintings and carvings that represent people and in, in ancient time in back in Iran and their clothing um, had this mark like it was ornate with uh, lotus symbols um, and also um, you see it um, carved or made into vessels so uh, for example, water, um, drugs, or bowls for food, uh, because it, the whole idea was um, that divine power will protect this person from uh, any harm or being poisoned or, or um, any harm coming to them, um, naturally or unnaturally. So for that, I designed uh, that. So all of those four different motifs are surrounding a center motif which is another lotus motif actually and that one uh, is representative of the person you're protecting so those four um, lotuses are surrounding that center motif and it's shaped like diamond which is one of the stable um, geometrically stable um, shape forms okay so um, I hope you enjoy my, my design um, so uh, during the month of September I actually um, released another uh, pattern as well. It looks like this. And it's called a black belt sampler. This is uh, a sampler inspired by a phrase that I heard uh, Denise from Black Ribbon Stitch Studio use in one of her um, latest, um, I think two now, two videos ago on her floss tube. Um, she mentioned that and she jokingly says that she has million dollar ideas and I do not disagree She comes up with the most unique phrases and they're all like worthy of turning into patterns So I heard her say this uh, that she has black belt in partial art and I was like This should be a pattern. Well, I made it into a pattern <laughs> so um it's uh the, the good thing about it is the border is intentionally unfinished because it's whole the whole point is for you to have a black belt in partial art and enjoy however much you actually stitch on a project um so technically i highly recommend that you finish the phrase itself so i stitch the phrase first and then if you go to the border and you start stitching the border at any point, if you stop, that's the finished project. You don't have to stitch the border just like what I charted it because it needs to be unfinished. So at any level of unfinishedness, eh, it still counts, right? <laughs> so you can actually, you can, if you like, you can just follow what I charted and stitch the whole thing or you can just stitch a little bit, uh, one of the flowers, a couple of them, um, or even if you're really um, adamant on completing the border, you can technically repeat the motifs and finish the border, but that would not, that would defeat the purpose of actually, you know, it doesn't make sense. You do need to have it to be partial. <laughs> All right, so and that's the size of that is 197 by 79 and it is uh, also um, similar to my other pattern and uh, is charted in DMC. Okay, lastly, what is happening in the community? 
it's fall you all it's it's spooky season it's my happy time uh, finally October is here and you can be as witchy and as spooky as you like and I love it uh, people get excited over Christmas stitching I get a uh, excited over fall stitching and especially especially Halloween stitching I love spooky patterns I don't design necessarily anything is spooky per se I have like motifs that you can actually read it or see it as it's being a little spooky but um, I really much love stitching um, spooky patterns so I really enjoy them so yeah I'm happy about that let's talk about finishes so first of all I have a finish that I cannot show share with you because I first of all because I don't have it with me um, already stitched it send it away and it's in the possession of just cross stitch magazine yes I got into got just cross stitch magazine for the Halloween of 2024 so I do have a pattern for that and I did finish the model and I send it away so that is happening so you have to wait less than a year for that to come out and you'll see that pattern uh, okay so other than that the next finish I had was Guts Critters. This was a sow uh, that I started with uh, Julie. Um, Julie in the stitches. And this is, um, I used uh, my own colors. Um, so I looked at the image and just picked my own. Mostly our color in cotton. And um, I think there are a couple of uh, cottage garden threads in there as well. And this is 20 count mimosa green. And I stitched two strand over one. Um, and I know it's a lot, a lot of people on 20 count, they just use one strand, but I loved to get the maximum coverage when it comes to the critters. I really love this. And this is part of the work basket the stash sow. Uh, so it will be an ongoing sow. So now I have finished this. I hopefully soon will start another work basket pattern um, project because, you know, I have so many of them and I need to stitch them. Uh, so yeah, so I've one finished, I don't know, 48, 49, 50 to go. Next, uh, this one has a story. Um, so speaking of amazingness of some of the designers and the stitchy community, um, there are a few designers I really truly admire. And I jokingly always say, I wanna be them when I grow up. One of them for sure, hands down, is Jacob from Modern Fork Embroidery. Not only for the work ethic, at class, like a fantastic human being, uh, like aside from his designing but also very generous very kind and super duper talented designer not only because of the patterns that he comes up with which they're all brilliant let's be honest but also because of the work ethic and the speed that he produces these patterns I feel like every couple of weeks he comes up with three or four patterns and case in point this one um this is uh got the morphs so the, ha the story behind it is so i saw this uh post on instagram about this phrase got the morphs which is a victorian phrase describing a state of mind that melancholy that really feeling blue and dark and and wanting to just as jacob puts it crawl into this dark room and watch adam's family for the hundreds times um describes that feeling um and i posted it as a story and said well this is like it describes me a lot of times overnight like within a matter of hours i received a message from jacob letting me know that he has charted it and that he likes to send me and if it's okay if he credits me 
and somehow I'm like, what? <laughs> and then also he that he generously sent me a copy um, of the pattern and asked my, uh, you know, my opinion. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, of course it's of course it's perfect, right? I I opened the file. I'm like, looks perfect. Um, and so of course I had to stitch it. So here it is. I stitched it on 18 count rust and uh, I use um, cottage garden thread uh, and this is two over one cottage garden thread uh, in a hearth uh, so this is like a black and gray you, you see like here there is more gray so there are some spots that are more gray um, I love it. This was a relatively quick stitch. Uh, I think three or four days and like three or four sitting and it was done. Yeah, talented, I'm telling you. Um, lastly, uh, in terms of finishes, I'm gonna share with you a finish that is not mine, but because I have been sharing my mom's uh, journey with the stitching, I. I'd like to share this with you so this is her newest finish i haven't had a chance to fully finish it but i'm gonna frame it similar to the last one that i framed for her um so yeah this was a stamped kit and i think she's improving like these are good relatively really nice stitching right yeah she's getting really good so my mom's finish she loves it when I share her um, projects. All right, I think that's it in terms of finishes. Now let's talk about webs. Okay, so the first one that I worked on, so this one is tied into the Whipco. So Whipco is a brainchild of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. I always link her below in my description box because I do, I have been doing Whipco now. This is the second year and I've been much more successful than last year. By this time last year, I gave up on Whipco. Like I got to October and I was like, ah, I'm done. <laughs> this time around, I'm still keen to it. So so far so good let's see how if i can finish the whole board right so far i have i've been actually me making my every single commitment that i make for that month and meeting my goals so let's see if i if i can continue with that throughout the year um so yeah so for that um one of the numbers that came up for me i'm not doing a project attached to any number i'm doing a prompt attached to a number so the prompt that came up was stitch on something difficult and um there are so many different ways that you can interpret that a specialty uh, um you know stitching or maybe stitching with um metallic or whatever or higher count or i don't know whatever but for me, I interpret it as uh, a project that I have difficulty actually stitching, meaning that every time I pick them up, pick that project up, I cannot stitch more than a sitting on it. So I stitch on it for a day and then I'm done. And I have actually restarted this project once. So I started and I stitched on it. This was my new year. Um, I think this was my new year project for 2023 and i started it i stitched on it for a sitting and then i hated the fabric so i changed the fabric i restarted it i stitched again one sitting could not go further than that left it alone a couple months ago i picked it up again i stitched on it only one night that was it i put it aside and i'm like what is happening i love this design let me first show you what the design is so this is come to the garden. Uh, by the way, this is like working copy. I always make working copy, but I never mark any of my patterns because the goal is for me to um, finish a project and then pass the pattern to the next person who's interested. Um, so yeah, so this is come to the garden, but to use a Colgate. And um, I, I love this, this, I love this design. It's a beautiful pattern. 
I mean, I, I, I'm not, I wasn't a huge fan of the color palette, but that's never an issue for me because I always change the colors anyway. So I changed the colors. And I am stitching it on 18 count. I picture this plus Ada in um, Mystic, which is this beautiful deep blue. Ooh, hello, new camera. It actually shows the color much better than the old one. <laughs> I'm excited. Guess what? I finally was able to crack it. And because I had the obligation of WIPCO, I was finally able to finish the first page. So you see what I'm saying? It's beautiful. And the color palette, this is my own color palette. I came up with a sake conversion for this. And I didn't really convert it like one-to-one, -one, like finding an equivalent of the um, called for. Instead, I first picked the fabric and I started from there. And I picked the color that will pop on that fabric. So this is page one done, finally. Next, I worked, uh, I actually started a project um, and it is Thursday Goes Goth uh, by Hemlock and Rye, which is uh, Julie from Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World uh, here on uh, Floss 2. And so Thursday was uh, a, a reproduction by uh, Julie and she I loved that I bought the original and I was planning on going with the bright version it she already offered two versions in that first uh, round um, one was from the colors you see on the front which are wash uh, sun washed and then um, the back side, which is more protected against sun and all the elements. So you see the actual colors that were used um, at the time of the stitching. Um, I was planning on doing the bright version, but then I saw her stitching a different version. And I was like, wait a minute, I want that. And that was dark and moody and goth and bright at the same time. And that's my vibes. That's, I thrive in that color palette. Let me show you the color palette. First, let me show you the actual pattern. So this is the pattern. So it's a little washed out here, but it's a little darker than this that you see here. And you can tell from the color palette, just look at the colors you see there are some neons happening and then there are some purples and greens and this is like some rusties and reds and this is beautiful so this is the original um this is what she charted for the goth version so I had to wait until she released this version because I wanted to stitch this version, nothing else. So yeah, so this is called for because you don't mess with perfection. So if someone has already recharted the original design to look even better in a different palette, you stick to that palette, which I did. And here it is, it's beautiful. Um, and this is a one of Nitya's artwork that she gave us uh, when we saw each other in that small retreat of ours. Um, so I'm using these as um, uh, the, what's it called? Floss blink, floss blink, whatever. That's the blink, the decoration. <laughs> and let me show you my sort. I'm stitching this on 18 count Davosa fabric in Cauldron. Uh, this is from Hand Dyed by Gem on Etsy. And here is what I have. This is the first page border, and I started on a couple of tiny motifs. This is beautiful. And just look at the fabric. It's so spooky. And let me show you the 
effect of these colors. Right? Right? Beautiful. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. Um, and it's stitching two over one, by the way. So the Vosa fabric is like um, even weave, but because this is 18 count, um, if you stitch one over one, it looks really similar in terms of ease of the stitching to stitching on 18 count. So I think 18 count Ada. So that's what I like about these. Next, I stitched on, um, we go on from a spring fling um, box by uh, these 20 stitches and Uncanny Kari. And this is what it looks like. And I'm using everything that came in the box, the fabric and floss and everything. Last time I showed you this, I only had the hilt of the sword and nothing else. So right now I have a little bit more of this actual blade and then I started on the flowers. Next, I started a couple of spooky projects. So I was supposed to record my floss tube on the 30th. Um, guess what? I was not in the mood to record anything. So instead, I watched Doctor Who, my favorite season. Uh, I mean, not my favorite season, my favorite doctor, uh, Tenth Doctor. Uh, David Tennant does it for me in terms of like doctor, sense of humor, um, quirkiness. That's like chaotic energy in, in general. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so I watched that and then I started... Uh, from Cozy Cabin Stitching, I started Cauldron Bubble, which is this cute little pattern. I wanted to start a, spoo a spooky season with something spooky. So this is it. And this is why I stitch while watching Doctor Who. It's a good start, right? Good start. Next, yesterday was um, the Witchy, Stitchy, Witchy Stitcher Day. Um, this is uh, the day that in honor of uh, the Witchy Stitcher, who uh, is a great member of our community, fantastic designer, and they're going through some hard time with cancer. Um, so um, everyone gathered around as it is the, um, the way when it comes to Stitchy community. Uh, to support them and one of the ways that was um, decided is the way we know best which is shopping for cross stitching stuff and starting new projects so why not do both so I have made a purchase um, a while ago on another hashtag related event I think it was stitchy for witchy or something like that so I bought the pattern but at the time I was working on different projects so I did not start it I bought it to support them but now on the witchy stitcher day I started this little guy which is all hallows bat right yes all hallows bat and here where I am. I still have it in the hoop because I, this is my current project. That's what I'm working on. All right, so that is all of my whips. Now let's talk about plans. First, let's talk about Whipgo. Um, so whip go numbers uh, were out for the month of October and they're number 14 and 19. 14 for me is an easy stitch. Um, I have decided that I am going to as much as I can stitch on the spooky things on, in October. So I already have two starts on the spooky stuff. So those are both easy stitches. There are smaller uh, stitches so I'm going to be working on those if I have enough time after I finish those two uh, because usually my prompt is for six days of a stitching for each of the numbers um, so if I have time then then I'm going to start a different spooky small um, other than that that will be it for for that prompt 
the next prompt was 19, which for me is working on a design or model of stitching, which is like a perfect timing because I have uh, been working on a really special project near to my heart um, that is supposed to be my uh, birthday release. My birthday in January is in January 4th. So I have a little bit of time uh, to model stitch this. Um, and there are two versions of it. I have a monochrome version and a color version. My plan is to um, model stitch the color version. And I'm in the process of finalizing. It's like, I would say it's 98% done. I, I am thinking about the retouching a couple of pieces in it and adding a couple more colors and switching a color in there as well. And then when that is done, then I will model stitch. So that will be six days on finalizing the pattern and then starting the model stitching for my hopefully birthday release. And I usually tend to keep my model stitches and all the process secret until the reveal. However, this time I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna show you the whole pattern now, but when I start, I have been teasing uh, posts. I posted, I think, three posts on Instagram with um, sneak peeks of the design, and I asked people to guess what it is. Only one person guessed right. <laughs> so then I'm gonna start model stitching. When I start model stitching, I'm gonna just show you the model I'm, I'm stitching and th at this stage it is at. Um, and so it's not gonna be a secret. It will be a slow reveal because as I stitch more on it, you will see more of it, uh, but it's not gonna be a huge um, reveal. You, you prob pretty much early on, I think on the first page, you, you can guess pretty accurately what it is um, and it is part of the weird and w wonderful collection so it's another creature that I am designing and I have to I, not designing I, I designed yeah so that's uh, with go goals next goal that I have is again related to my own designs and this is something I have been working on forever and I do need to hunker down and actually fully finish it um so the magical carpet menagerie was the first collection full collection with nine different creatures that i came up with um, and i finished it last year uh, last piece of it was um released i think in august last august um august of 2022 um so now i want to piece all nine together make them into a pillow and then my goal is to release a, a booklet a collection basically of all nine patterns all together um, and so if someone wants to purchase the whole thing together um, it will be more cost effective if they do it rather than buying them one by one you still will have the option of purchasing them separately but I want to offer it as a whole collection together as well so this will be the model for for that so I do need to finish the, the pillow basically so I have started piecing them together and the way it works so how I designed this was all of my um, designs are hundred by hundred or a smaller a uh, hundred by hundred stitches or a smaller and they, I stitched them all on 18 count Ada various brands but all 18 count them so then uh, to piece them together i use one of those um coating um squares and this is a six inch by six inch square and i am tracing that and centering each of these in those squares and um, then i will stitch them together so they will line up and the squares will be six by six. Um, so they have like the empty space around it, the edges will be different for each piece, but overall it will look coherent. Um, so this is the first row done. This is the second row. 
this is the second row and I'm piecing to together the third row so I still have the so I'm hand stitching them together and the last one is still not attached so I'm hoping to be able to fully finish um, this project um, this month in October so I can actually put together and re-release um, the whole Magical Carpet Menagerie um, as one booklet. Lastly, because um, I don't have enough um, whips and because I don't have enough cells to go on, just kidding, I have too many cells um, and I have, I think, too many webs, but who is counting? I'm not. I mean, I am, but who cares? Um, I just went over my web pile and UFO'd three. Um, so I let go of three projects so I can actually um, open some space for new starts. So I, I feel good. I feel good about that. So Nitya, Julie, and Sarah um, all, and me, we are all part of a group um, called uh, needle miners and we went on that retreat in Quad City retreat that we four of us established and went to um, and uh, as 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 a group we like to do things together sometimes so this was a project um, Sal suggested by um, Nitya so it's called artsy farsi Sal <laughs> and it's based on artsy housewife patterns. Have you seen those patterns? They're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. So many quirky patterns to choose from. I mean, seriously. So we decided to start a style with with their pat with uh, with those patterns, and you can just choose from whatever pattern you like. Um, you can choose one of the small ones, even a freebie ones, or you can go big and choose one of the bigger patterns. Uh, sky is the limit. Do whatever you like. And you can, you're free, feel free to join us. We are planning on starting next weekend because we are meeting over Zoom and we're going to start together. And uh, the only objection that we set, only rule that we set for ourselves is I think everyone in the group is doing the same, I think. So more or less, we are all kitting up our projects from a stash. So that's what I did. I kitted up from stash. And this is the pattern that I chose. And accidentally, I was watching Michelle, Michelle Bendy, and Michelle Gare from Bendy Stitchy. And she mentioned that she is a starting, she's thinking about a style. And guess which pattern she chose? This. <laughs> So I left the comment and said, well, <laughs> we are doing a sale. Do you, you know, you can join. <laughs> so this is the pattern that um, I am stitching on. I just uh, look at this face. Come on. And look how majestic it is. How big it is. I mean, it's a small pattern, but relatively small. But half of it is Byron. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. And this is spooky. So it's fitting to be start to, to start this in month of October. This is the fabric that I chose. It's 18 count Ada XG design in um, grandpa's sleeve. And I have pulled some whew, threads from a stash. Some are DMC, some are just random threads. Again, another blank thingy from Nitya. Um, so I have this whole lot of over-dyed cotton in, this is like almost black. It is black, but it's not really black. Um, it's like a navy black and 
this is uh, from this Vietnamese um, seller on on Etsy I was just trying out something new and I bought a whole bunch of this in black and then white as well so because you can never go wrong with that <laughs> and I have a few I guess these these are the DMC and then these three are DMC and then this one is a random thread that I don't know what it is and this one is anchor white so that's my palette now let's talk about a stitch of kindness and then I have um, a couple of shout outs and then a couple of ha hauls and then um we t i talk about a book and we wrap it up right nice okay so let's talk about a stitchy kindness first so speaking of amazingness that is like stitchy community if you remember uh, a few videos ago i mentioned that i do have a unicorn pattern now like i used to like laugh at those people who had unicorn patterns and i was like oh there are so many patterns i mean why are you obsessed with this one if it's out of print it's out of print get over it well guess what i'm one of those people now um or i was one of those people um so my unicorn pattern is um by work basket surprise surprise <laughs> so along the line of like my obsession with work basket i came across this sampler and i could not i, I can't tell you why i'm obsessed with it but i i'm obsessed with it I, i'm not ashamed to say i'm obsessed with it and i've been looking for it everywhere and i could not find it anywhere you can't find it it's really rare um and it's out of print everywhere and those who have it in their stash they're sticking to it and they're not gonna let go and if you find it um here and there um it's it gets it snatched up so quick that it's like it's like lightning speed and it's gone <laughs> so yeah um it's called a stitch in time uh during the last world um um international cross stitch day i uh, basically posted uh, on instagram with the same request I posted a photo of the pattern and said this is what i'm looking for it's my unicorn i'm gonna just put it in a universe and see what happens guess what help came to me from closer than i thought yeah i mean it's a small world and it's a generous world sometimes and i forget that people can be this generous so guess who reached out to me on dm um michelle <laughs> michelle garrett from bendy city he reached out and said oh i do have that pattern and if you like you can have it to stitch it so she was willing to lend it to me and get what I have, I have in my hands. <gasps> it's here. It is here. Yes. It's Stitch in Time by Work Basket. Just look at that. <sighs> I cannot believe that I have my unicorn pattern in my hands. Oh, super excited. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Michelle. I mean, so generous and she said oh don't rush i'm like make sure i'll this will be my priority i will stitch it as soon as i can and i will return it definitely and first of all i'm gonna i mean you see this i'm touching this now you're not gonna see this touched this much at all i'm gonna make a, a work copy um tomorrow when i go to office because we have the best printer there so i'm gonna just make a work copy of this pattern and then after that this will go back into the protected envelope and is stashed in a safe spot until I finish the stitching and then I will mail it back to Michelle so yeah his stitch in time is here 
I'm super excited. I'm probably gonna start stitching it for, I know it's called like Black Sampler November, but I'm gonna just drop the black and say Sampler November, and I'm gonna stitch this on in November, because why not? <laughs> just thank you, thank you so much. I mean, the generosity out of the world. And speaking of people being generous, um, in the past couple of videos, I have showcased a specific um, fabric dyer that is a super small shop. She just started on Etsy, but she is coming up with unique pieces. So if you buy a piece, that's it. That's the only one that she has of that kind. No one, it's a complete unique experience because it's like each piece is artwork on its own and just one is made. Um, so it's a fantastic, and the, the colorways are beautiful and brilliant and unique. Um, and I am and, and saturated. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for colorful pa uh, fabrics. So, um, so I showcased a couple of pieces that I had from her. And then she reached out to me, Christy, and she is so, she was so appreciative. And I'm like, I don't do this just to, and she was like, I want to dye a couple of pieces for you and your viewers because you were kind. And I'm like, that's not what I showcase things. I showcase, I love to showcase, especially a smaller designer and fabric dyers, people in our community as a whole because I know as someone who has a small shop and I'm a small designer, really small designer, relative to a lot of other designers out there, um, that I know how difficult it is to persevere and stick to it and day in, day out to stick to your art and share it with the world, hoping that people will accept it and like it um, and to be seen, right? In a sea of other options and especially when there are bigger companies that are more noticeable and more people know them by name and designers use them all the time um, it's really important to showcase this smaller guy um, or gal uh, in this case who has a small shop right so i love to do that and i showcased her and she sent me three pieces um so i'm keeping one because i can't resist and then I am giving away two of the pieces to you. So if you have stuck around until this point, guess what? There is a giveaway. Okay, let me show you the pieces. First, I'm gonna show you the pieces that I'm giving away. So this is a 14 count Ada. And they don't have names because they're unique. And this is um, 17 by 29. And this is the other side. This looks like a stormy um, night or sea. It's really beautiful. So if you like to receive this, um, please use blue in comment below, blue. And then the second piece in, is 18 count. Again, this is 17 by 28. And this is, just look how amazing this looks. Absolutely amazing. So if you are interested in receiving this one in the mail, please use um, word green in your comment. So again, blue, this is 14 count, green, this is 18 count. And let me show you the piece that I'm keeping for myself because I'm greedy and because these are beautiful and I cannot resist. Look at this. This is a stunning, right? It's just stunning. Yeah, this is another 18 count. Um, 
in a seven, uh, yeah again it's one one of a kind and the size is 17 by 28 so i'm keeping this one and i'm giving the other two away so rules of giveaway you already know if you have entered any of giveaways on youtube you know how it works do not men mention giveaway prize raffle nothing under in 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 the uh, comment at all um and make sure you're 18 or older because I want to make sure that I can get your address. I usually only open my giveaways to national, just to US. However, this time it's open internationally. So doesn't matter where you are, as long as USPS delivers to you, that's the caveat because I go with USPS. And if they do deliver to you, I can send it to you and I will send it to you. Um, this has no monetary value, so if it gets lost in the mail, unfortunately, it will not be replaced. It's This is just a price, right? It's not, a mon there is no monetary value attached to it. Um, yeah, and make sure that you use word um, words that I said, like blue and green in the comment below. And good luck. And this will be open until my next floss tube. So a day before I record that floss tube, I'm gonna just um, pull the names and then message under your comment. All right, um, that's the giveaway. Now I have a few items of haul and uh, we talk about one book and then we wrap it up. So while I was, uh, I placed an order to get the called for threads for Therza and uh, of course threads cannot travel alone like that's the rule you know that um, I think everyone knows that so I bought I never I never tried Milhel this some I never mainly because I don't do beading and this has a lot of beads but I don't do beading but I was like you know what I never stitch on perforated paper at all either and I have never beaded and I have never done mill hell so let's go with a really tiny project and I was intrigued because this one is called Persian pumpkin because it has like the paisley design on it so I decided to go with that and it has this green light green paper and these are the threads and all the beads so yeah we'll see how, how successful I'll, I'm I will be in this and I think this is like 14 count paper if I'm not mistaken it's like 14 count and I got a piece of um twilight belfast linen 32 count for tiny stitching i thought it would be lighter this is very dark i'm a little afraid so i'm gonna try it in a corner and see if i can actually do it if not this probably will be a giveaway next time we'll see lastly i purchased a book this is separate from the book talk by Rafa uh, Kanayam. Uh, it's about Tatri's Thobna. Thob is a dress that a lot of Palestinian women wear. And um, Tatri is decorated with Tatri's usually. So this is a book about the history of that garment. And has a lot of photos of different styles tools and it also has charts and at the end it does have um, instruction of how to assemble a thobe actually so for those of you who know sewing You can follow the instruction and get your own, make your own thought. Yeah. So that's that. Um, 
gonna link everything below so if you're interested in to trees history of um, the garments that are made um, and Palestinian art uh, check the link below now let's talk about a uh, couple of shout outs um, we're gonna highlight a couple of uh, channels that I really enjoy watching uh, one is Elizabeth Savory she is relatively new to the crustish community in terms of um, being on floss too, but she has come with full force and has a great uh, whip braid and a lot of like she does a lot of finishes and easy finishes which I'm a fan of uh, she loves the spooky stitching she color changes um so it's yeah a woman after my own heart so i love what she does and all the projects she works on um it really enjoy it. i love her tone of voice too that helps next is world on a string by dara um she is um a fellow member of the stitchers collective she has such cute and quirky patterns when I'm talking about like smaller designers who I might not have come across, like I'm really thankful for being part of the collective because of that, because it exposed me to so many new designers to me that I'd never heard of or never came across. And I love their designs, I love their style and I love their patterns. Dara is one of those people and she designs a lot of like quirky patterns, really cutesy patterns that I usually don't like, come across somehow they my feet is full of samplers somehow um so if it if it was up to that it i would have never come across her work but because of the stitchers collective uh um i now know her as a designer and i love her patterns she has like a whole series of teapots that are absolutely adorable like I highly recommend you go check her website. She has the most adorable designs, like seriously. So yes, check them both. I will actually have the link down below, just like anything else that I mentioned here. Uh, so follow them and give them a like, give them, watch their videos, subscribe to them. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about a book that I'm reading. Um, I don't have a, like a lot of people have like a book section at the end of their videos. I usually don't. Um, I love reading. I'm on Goodreads. If you want to follow me, I'm actually gonna leave my Goodread down below. You're welcome to follow me there um, or friend me or whatever. Um, especially because I, I am uh, starting this project for 2024. I actually listed um, my TBR for 2024. I'm gonna strictly read books that are under happy ending um and joy queer um stories and queer reading um so um there are written by queer authors and are a story of queer people and i'm uh, intentionally choosing a diverse range of writers and stories um representing all aspect of queerness which is surprisingly really hard <laughs> especially when it comes to finding stories that have happy ending it breaks my heart that it's really difficult to find them as a queer person i do love to enjoy my reading i don't want to weep i i weep already as much as i can and i it's humanly possible and i grieve every day all the lost time and lost moments of my childhood and adulthood and all the pain that i carry with me in my memory in my body and in my soul i don't need another way to torture myself so when i read i usually read enjoyable books so it was difficult to put together that list and even with that some people have messaged me letting me know some of the books that are on that list which i don't know because i have not read them yet are not really joyous so we shall see i'm gonna actually as i read the, those books i'm gonna edit that list based on how joyous the book is or how much of a happy ending it has so i'm 
having my fingers crossed for majority of them having at least happy ending even if they go through shit oops <laughs> i want them to at least at the end make make it through and have a chance at life at least i don't think that's hard that's too much to ask but you know um so speaking of books this is another book that I'm reading, uh, revisiting and rereading. This is a collection of poetry by Iranian poet Farooq Farooqzad. She uh, was born in uh, 1930 something and died in 1967 at the age of 32, pretty young. And she was a feminist icon, is still a feminist icon and um, a modernist poet and I loved her books um, I read her books at various of stages in my life and every time I got something different from it um, as a preteen this was a curiosity this was a forbidden book um, this was one of a few authors that I was pretty discouraged to read because it has um, depiction of love um, in a really earthly manner and is in no way pornographic but the sensitivity of my family at the time anywho so but still I read it um, then I read it again as a teenager then in my 20s then in my late 20s then now again so I'm reading it again this is a book that a lot of times in so per, Persian or Farsi is um, doesn't have gender um, so the language doesn't have gender there are other signs that you can tell if the person that is described is uh, male or female but the language itself the words uh, on their own they don't have gender uh, there is no pronoun that way and um, as a result a lot of um, in modern days a lot of people have revisited a lot of these poetry especially hers um, and there is such a thing that's like it's called queer reading of um, of the books of her books uh, especially poetry um, and um, it's basically giving gender and uh, reading it, reading the, the poems um, uh, in a queer way, if, if this is a queer love that she's talking about. And it's such an interesting twist. And I, I really, really enjoy that, th that kind of translation. So I'm revisiting it. There are a couple of like, she is, she has some vivid imagery in her poetry and I am contemplating coming up with at least one or two designs based on her uh, poems. Um, her poems also, like she was not just a poem, she was a photographer, she uh, was a filmmaker, um, she has recorded, she has recorded this book in her voice. There are several recordings of, of her books in different, and different people have read it in audio form, but the one that is in her voice is haunting and so beautiful. Um, so I always listen to that one. Uh, the way she reads her, her poet, poems, it's beautiful. Um, and she passed away in a car crash uh, and there was no safety at the time so her car you know the car crash was so severe that she passed away unfortunately at the age of 32 she's not only fam famous for her activism and her um using her voice and poetry and making um the movie that she made this house is black is a very dark movie but it's a very interesting movie um, but also she's famous for all the people that she was connected to. So the, at that point, there was this goal, that was a golden age of art in Iran. And there are a lot of poets and um, painters and photographers and filmmakers 
that were peers at the same time and they had there is a lot of cross contamination um, of their work and they influenced each other and they had a lot of relationships with each other so back and forth so she had been famously connected with a poet a couple of poets um, a photographer a filmmaker and at the time um, and they all like mourned her loss and their work was influenced by her in a way so yeah um yeah so i'm i'm reading through it again so that is it that is it well it was a long one so by the way this is the second one i'm recording this video i swear i'm hoping that my software does not crash and does not corrupt the file again uh, because I don't know what to do. Uh, if that happens, then I'm going to revert back to recording on my old phone that I was recording before rather than this new one because my software doesn't support this, um, apparently. All right, so I hope as much or as little stitching as you do in the month of October is enjoyable for you. And if you are um, spooky like me, I hope that you enjoy this spooky season and it's as haunting as it can be for you. So happy stitching everyone. Take care. Bye.